Kia ora, kia ho, hello mai, welcome to Homemade Let's Cook. Today, we're going to be using up some leftover egg whites and what better way to do that than make a caramel meringue slice. Sounds amazing, I've never made it before, so um, I'm really looking forward to it. So it's gonna be in three stages because we need to make the base, we need to make a caramel, and we need to make the topping. So we're gonna start off by making the base because um, that needs to cook for 15 minutes before we start the other. Because that meat needs to cook for 15 minutes to start with. So, first of all, 100 grams of softened butter in our bowl. I'm going to add to that two tablespoons of caster sugar. Now, you could use a beater for this if you wanted to, but this is gonna to come together really, really quickly because the butter's already softened. Now, I've got the oven on to moderate, and our baking time's gonna be 15 minutes, and in that time, we're actually going to make the caramel. Right, so that's already come together. Pretty quick and simple like that. Into that, we're going to add a whole egg. And again, just get that quick mix around. It won't take too long to come together. Now, it might split, but don't worry about that at all. So, we're making a bit of a pastry base here with, with our four ingredients for the base. You could use a whisk for this, as I say together really nicely with a bit. All right, one and a half cups of self-raising flour. And in that goes. Now start slowly to combine, just so your flour doesn't go everywhere. Nothing worse than flour everywhere and all of your clothes, particularly when you're wearing black. So this will start to come together a bit like a pastry. And of course, we're going to get our hands stuck in as well. It doesn't take very long to come together. And in actual fact, I'm just going to get my hands stuck in right now. So it becomes a little bit crumbly to start with. You can see it jumps out of the bowl as well. And then of course, it starts to come together. Now it's interesting this one because it does use the self-raising flour as opposed to a combination of plain flour or just plain flour, which we often find in a lot of our sliced recipes. But even so, because this is more of a pastry-like consistency, it's still not gonna rise a whole amount. So I'll just get those few little stragglers and pop them back in the bowl. So that's come together beautifully. And that is going to go straight into our tray. And make sure um, that you've got it lined right up to up the sides on two of the sides. And the reason we do that is to lift the slice out. Because as you can imagine, we're going to be adding caramel. And then we're going to be adding meringue. And you'll be thinking to yourself, how am I gonna get this out of the pan? And I'll be thinking that too. Doesn't matter if it's not on the third and fourth sides, because of course, you can run your knife or, or something else around those edges. Now I'm just crumbling this a little bit, just so I can disperse it a little bit more easily along inside our pan. And today, I'm not using my trusty square pan, but maybe I should have. Um, today, I'm just using my other slice pan. It's not as big as a Lamington size pan, but it's about 25 centimeters by 18. Right, so now that I've got that crumbled, I'm actually just gonna press that down now. Right, 
It's always the thing with some of these recipes, isn't it? You look at the amount and you think, goodness, I'm not sure that that's enough for the pan I've got. And if you think that's the case, just choose a smaller pan. I've got a pan that's slightly smaller than this one. And I use that sometimes. I use that in particular when I'm doing gluten-free recipes. And you can look out for, um, well, particularly the one that uh, we have done, the caramel slice. It was 10 square, wasn't it? Well, similar. Just the topping's a little bit different. So what are we going to need for our middle layer, which is our caramel? You're going to need sweetened condensed milk. You're going to need golden syrup, a little bit of vanilla, and a little bit of butter. So we're going to use 100 grams of butter. Two tablespoons of golden syrup. And a tin of condensed milk. All right, so there is our base. And then it's going to go into the oven for about 15 minutes until it's golden brown. Now on the stove top, I'm just going to prepare that caramel sauce. And once that's combined and thick, I'm going to take that from the stove and just let that cool while our base is cooking. So here we are with our base. It's a light golden brown, so I'll just set that down. And we'll just bring over the caramel sauce that we've made in the meantime as well. And just a correction there, we actually used 200 grams of butter to the tin of condensed milk, then four tablespoons of golden syrup, and just adding in just a trickle of vanilla essence before we pop this over the base. So I'm going to pour that over. And that's going to go into the oven for another 10 minutes. And while that's happening, yes, you guessed right, we are going to make the meringue topping. So this will bubble up quite a bit. quite hot when we pull it out. So back in the oven for 10 minutes. So now it's time to prepare our egg whites. So we've got two of those and because it does take some time I have already um, used the beaters to form stiff peaks on those egg whites and now what we need to do is we need to add four tablespoons of caster sugar, just one at a time. So I'm going to do that slowly. And um, we're still waiting for our um, base and caramel layer to come out of the oven. So we've got time. So while we've been making the meringue, the caramel's had a little bit of time to cool on top of the base. Now add your meringue to the top and cook until gone. You can make whatever decoration you like on the top, but if you've got some nice peaks on there, that will look fantastic. You could have piped the meringue, but you will lose some of the volume. So it's nice to keep it light and fluffy. This is a really good way of using the egg whites. You could also try making the party meringues that we made the other day as well. 
It won't be a really thick layer of meringue on top. There we go. So we've got some attractive peaks on there. And as I say, into the oven, keep a good eye on it. And when it's golden brown, pull it out. Now it hasn't taken very long at all. Our meringue is now browned on top. We're going to leave this to cool in the tin and then lift it out a little bit later on, ready to cut up. And then we'll have a look at the final product. I hope you've enjoyed making caramel meringue slice with us today. And I hope you'll join us again.